This is how I read books. This is my e-reader, it's a Kindle. It has a super minimalistic view of all my favorite books and it's perfect on the go. I've made a few modifications on the backside. One of the most valuable things you can do with your free time is reading books. They not only contain a huge depth of information, but just a single idea in a book has the possibility of changing your life entirely. Among my friends, I'm definitely known as somebody that reads a lot of books and talks about them a lot. So in this video, I want to talk about how to absorb books like a sponge, some practical tips to read books up to two times faster. And at the end, I also share five of my favorite books that changed my life after reading it. So you can get started with this immediately. But first again, I want to share my favorite setup. So I do use a Kindle, which is an e-reader but I still prefer analog books and I have a pretty big collection of analog books. The main benefit of having an e-reader is that when I go travel or if I'm laying down the sofa, sometimes it's more convenient. And even sometimes, sometimes the book itself is just too hefty to lug around and read. Like for example, um, yeah, like for example, like this is one of my, my favorite books, the Steve Jobs biography. This is pretty difficult to like bring around and read. And I, so I think that is when it makes more sense to use an e-reader. So on my e-reader, I'll load up like some of the same books that I'm reading or some of my favorite books so that I can reread them. My favorite form factor is the Kindle, the between the Kindle and the Kindle Paperwhite, I think it's what it's called. And I made a few modifications to it on the backside. So I basically put a phone holder and also an air tag. And so this just makes it so it's easy for me to like read it if I'm like lying down on the sofa and it doesn't fall out of my hand, or if I'm like, uh, sometimes if I'm walking or just in a train, it won't fall in my hand. I've actually used this Kindle for 11 years now and it still works totally fine. It's still super responsive and fast. Um, and I load books on it with no problem. But I did recently get a new one last year. And the only reason I got a new one was just because I was tired of charging with the, like the micro USB. So this one has USB-C. And this one is actually even smaller than this one. Um, if you can tell, like the bezels are way smaller. Whenever I'm at home though, I still prefer reading on real books because there's kind of a memory associated with them and I can also write stuff and notes on the book itself. As I've read more books over the years, I realized that the most important thing about reading books is actually absorbing the information and implementing them. So I wanna share a few tips of how to actually retain the information better and absorb the knowledge. The first tip to help you absorb information better is actually to talk about them and teach them to other people. And this is something I do with my girlfriend and even my mom, like whenever I'm reading a book, I'll be sharing with them the things I've been learning. And I don't even wait until I finish reading the entire book. I do this in real time. Like as I'm reading the book, I'm sharing the things that I'm learning. And I think that's one of the most effective ways to actually retain the information that you're reading about. You'll find that you won't be able to actually explain something really well if you don't fully understand it. So getting into the habit of sharing the things you're reading and teaching them to other people will help you absorb books way better. And this ties into the second tip, which is to contextualize the knowledge that you learn. So I kind of talked about this concept in another video before, but a lot of times when you read a book, it'll just give you a framework or a bunch of different principles that might feel a little, a little bit disconnected from your life. And so what you can do is to recontextualize them in terms of your own life. So rather than just trying to memorize a bunch of different business principles, you can think about how each one applies to your own life and then write that down. The third tip is to summarize the book onto paper, video, or audio. This kind of ties into the second tip where you can write down what you're learning in terms of how it applies to your own life. But one of the benefits that I found of summarizing things onto paper is that you actually have a limit of how much space that you have. Whenever I've taken notes on books digitally, I find that it's actually harder to retain that information because I'll end up taking way more notes than necessary. And when I force myself to encapsulate everything I learned onto a single page in my journal, I find that I'm way more intentional and deliberate about what I want to leave on the page. It's also a way for you to artificially teach the information to somebody without there actually being another person. And that's why I think video and audio also works really well. Like the times I've made a video on the channel where I'm summarizing a book I'm reading, I find that I can pretty much recall everything I learned in there perfectly. But this is something that you can do with voice memos or just capturing it on your journal. So yeah, those are my three best tips to absorb books like a sponge, which is to teach them, to contextualize them into your own life, and to summarize the books onto paper or video. But now I wanna share some practical tips to read books faster so that you can really accelerate your learning. So for some context, I would consider myself a pretty fast reader, but that wasn't always the case. And if I really had to break it down, there were five main changes I made that helped me accelerate the speed that I would read books. And the first is a tip to actually read the words faster. 
by reducing something called subvocalization. So subvocalization basically just means that a lot of times when we read books, we're actually pronouncing each word in our head, which slows down how fast you can actually read them. First, you can actually get in the habit of not reading the words by forcing yourself to read the words faster. One way you can reduce subvocalization is to force yourself to read the words faster than you can pronounce them. But you can also do something where you don't literally look at every single word. So this is a speed reading technique I learned from Tim Ferriss. So instead of reading every single word individually, you kind of imagine two lines coming down like this. And to go through each line, you just look right here and right here, and you go through each line like that. You can, by reading through your peripheral vision, you can force yourself to reduce self-vocalization and read way faster. And over time, this pretty much becomes second nature, and you can read a line just by glancing from here and here. But this tip is only useful if your processing speed is faster than your reading speed, because if you're reading something really dense, you don't actually want to speed through it as fast as possible. You actually want to slow down and try to understand and comprehend the information. So the next four tips aren't tips to actually help you read the words faster, but they're tips to help you read more books overall. And so the second tip is to only read books that you find interesting. This is actually something I learned from my time when I was studying Japanese, but one huge unlock that helped me read more books overall was to read books in the same way that I would watch content, which basically just means that as soon as a book starts to become boring or not interesting, that's when you should drop it and switch to a new book. Because if you force yourself to finish a book, then it's going to create more friction around reading in general, and you're going to read less books. I also found in reading a lot of books that not all books are equal. Like different authors write books for different reasons. Like sometimes it's for lead generation, sometimes it's for marketing. Um, sometimes they're just capitalizing off a viral article. And so there is a certain type of book where they just have one idea and the rest of the book is repeating the idea and giving more examples or evidence to support that idea. And so for those books, it makes more sense that once you get the idea, you should drop it and move on to the next book. The third tip is to make reading easy and frictionless. This is why I use a Kindle because sometimes if I'm traveling, if I'm outside or even just laying down, it makes it easy for me to continue reading a book. I find that with the e-ink display, it's actually really nice to read on and it's like a totally different experience than if you were reading on your computer or your phone. The next tip is to buy books immediately when you want to read them. One of my favorite places to go to is the bookstore. And every time I go in there, I'll probably pick up one or two books, even if I'm not finished with the book I'm currently reading. There's actually a term for this in Japanese. It's called tsundoku, which refers to people that kind of hoard books without ever reading them. But from my personal experience, just buying the book and putting it on my bookshelf means I'll go and read it because I'll get reminded just looking at it. And the fact that I bought that book in the first place means that there was something about that book that stood out to me. And so even if I don't read it right now, I will be interested in that sometime in the future. So I definitely would recommend buying books as soon as you get a recommendation or there is some inspiration to read it. The next thing you can do to read more books overall is to use audiobooks. The most useful thing about audiobooks is being able to finish books while you're doing something else, like if you're going for a run or working out. But you can also use audiobooks in conjunction with reading to increase your focus and retention. One thing I do is I often re-listen to chapters that I've already read, which helps me in retaining the information and thinking about it more. So those are my tips to read more books overall and how to absorb and retain the information in those books. But I also want to share five book recommendations if you want to get started with these tips. They're just books that are really personally interesting to me and have changed my life in some way. But the first one is The Almanac of Naval Ravkan. So I'm pretty sure I talked about Naval in a different video, but he's basically this super successful VC investor. And somebody compiled all of his best notes and tweets into a single book. And this Almanac of Naval Ravkan is almost like a modern day philosophy book of this guy's thoughts on how to build wealth, how to be more happy, and how to live a meaningful life. So yeah, highly would recommend that book, especially if you've heard of his name before. The second book is this book called The Millionaire Fastlane. So I actually read this book uh, while I was still working at my consulting job. And this was the one book that made me made the leap to quit my job and pursue entrepreneurship. It breaks down a lot of different business models and helps you weigh which business models are better. So I would definitely recommend it as a beginner book into entrepreneurship. The third book is this book called Die With Zero, which is written by this super successful bond trader. Is he a bond trader? Energy trader. And he basically lays down this pretty contrarian philosophy, which is that you should aim to die with zero dollars in your bank account. And he talks about it mathematically with things like consumption smoothing 
and how you have more utility of money when you're younger. I think it's a pretty interesting book to read and think about no matter what age you're at. The fourth book is a book that really inspired me when I read it in college, but it's Steve Jobs biography. There's actually a co- there's actually a copy I got in Japan for like five five dollars at a used bookstore. I've read this multiple times, and it's really inspiring to see how far the company has gone since its early days, and also just to see what goes behind designing some of the best products that we use today. The last book I want to recommend is How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia. This is a novel about a guy that grows up in Rising Asia, and I really like it. It's super unique. It's written in second person. The author says you instead of I or he. And yeah, probably one of this is this is probably my favorite fiction book. I've read this. I've also read this multiple times and I might read it again. Hope the tips were helpful to help you read more books and actually absorb them. But if there's some books that you think I should read, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Let's get it.